I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to God except by me. There is no alternative. Luke 14, 15 to 33. And there you are going to see the same story that we saw as the parable as Luke saw it. But he had that some pieces of information for us. I won't bother too much on them. I will just touch on them and move to where I'm going. So those that were eating at the table with him, he said, blessed is he that we supper in heaven. He said, don't worry, I will show you a, 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 a better way. And he gave that parable, the same. But Luke provided additional information of more details about the excuses. One said, I just bought a land. The other said, I just uh, got an ox that will be working for me. See money issue. <laughs> and then number three, pleasure again. I just got me a wife. But God showed me a secret in that passage that unlocks the whole parable. That's why I'm coming to look accounts again now. When that parable ended, in verse 25, in verse 24, there about 24. Read the last. That 24, so that we can connect. For I say unto you, uh -huh. that none of those men which were bidding shall taste of my supper. The same story we have read in Matthew 22. He said, none of them will eat of my supper. And I'll give you the additional information Luke provided. Now, the key to understanding that parable is in that scripture. You know, this, the Bible was written as a continuum. Not in chapters and verses. That's very important in whatever exegesis we are doing. So that we will not limit ourselves to chapters and verses. Now, let's take it to 25 now. That's where the key is of your calling. He's telling us why they missed the calling from verse 25. Listen. And let's there go. went great multitudes with him. And great multitude. Plenty. I love children's language. <laughs> if you want to say something is very plenty, say. Ah, my daddy has plenty money. <laughs> Even if you don't know what he's saying, you can get the sense. <laughs> Praise God. So, plenty people are following him. Go ahead. And he turned uh -huh. and said unto them, Jesus is a master opportunity taker. Ah, hey, I'm here. All right. Egba, let's go. If any man come to me and ah, eat... I thought they had already come. He didn't see anyone that came to him. He didn't say, now that you have come. They had not come. They were just walking. They were not even following him. You will see us with freedom. If, so they were not the people that were following him yet. <laughs> if any man does what? Come to me. Come to me. That means they had not come. But when they left home, they said, We are going to Jesus' crusade. And here is Jesus in his crusade. And he was saying, When you are ready, you cannot come. Ah! Many of us thought we are in ministry, but we are not there at all. You can't jump the queue. I gave you the illustration of. Players that were invited to come. Someone like Mikel Obi is the captain of the young football team today. Nearly ready shirt. But because he's the captain, he got himself too enthralled in making sure that the players eat, they don't have problem. He missed all the trainings. He began to insult the coach because he's trying to be a good captain for the players and everything. We coach feature him. Because his primary job was not as a captain, it was as a player. That is why many prefects in school perform woefully in work. They were doing well, they were picked for prefects, but they forgot that's extra duty. When you are called by God to a ministry, it is additional to the calling. You can't read the Bible like them. You can't pray just like them. Suicide in here or suicide. If you have problem with English language and you are not a prefect, and you not carry the work of prefectship more than your academics, 
What will happen? That is what is happening to many of us. We have lifted the prefectship above being a student, which is the foundation of why you are even a prefect in the first case. Show them what they there. Money show what they there. Oh, what they Oh, quite for you <laughs> Go ahead. If any man come to me uh -huh. and hates not his father, hate not his father and mother, mother and wife, wife and children and brethren, brethren and sisters, sisters, yeah, and his whole life also, he cannot be my disciple. And the Bible already called them disciples, according to the account of the writer. But Jesus said, I wonder. Oh, you call them disciples because you don't know who a disciple is. Now let me show you. And he showed them. How many of us can raise our hands that we are disciples by this standard? And this is the premise for, the, for callings. To be put in the ministry as a called one, this is the prerequisite. This is the foundation. He has no message to send you that will not be polluted and diluted if you have not got to this status. This is what we should all strive to attain to, not a better pastor. He is not looking for pastors. He is not looking for evangelists. Why is he calling Mama Bola? 15 people are answering. Yes, sir. I will go, sir. I'm ready, sir. Yes, sir. He is not calling them. They don't hear call. They don't know call. They say they have call. What is the call? To be an evangelist. Who told you God is looking for evangelists? He's looking for sons. As the son lives the life of a son, whatever area of speciality God wants him to operate in, we begin to show up. You are going to fast and pray. What's my ministry? What nonsense life? What ignorance? What's your ministry? Your ministry is to live for God. What's your ministry? Don't let me go there. Go and listen to our message online. Minister without portfolio. Minister without portfolio. You will, your shoulders will come down. Pastor, evangelist, bishop. Your shoulders will come down. Because at the end of the day, those things are cheating you of your recalling. Even the callings. Those things are meant to be starting points for us. We limit ourselves. I'm a teacher. And that's the end. Otakusibe. I don't go there today. Go and listen. He said, you have to deny all these people. You have to prefer me to all of them. Before I got married to my wife, I told her, sorry, oh, you can't be number one in this life, oh. Kato Matama Kesebo. You can't be number one. That position has been taken before you came. I cannot be taken by any other. A man, she a second position. So the number one, you want to go? Jesus look back. Praise God. Amen. It is more serious than that. So my wife is number two. She knows. When things get tough in the house, my son will tell me, Daddy, see what your wife has done again. Oh. Now she, she becomes my wife. <laughs> Praise God. Because she knows that the first thing I will say is, you don't talk to my wife that way. You can talk to your mother, not my wife. As for my wife, you don't talk to her that way. No, you can't. You can talk to your mother because you don't come in. So when I will tell you, there's a way you can treat her. They're, okay, now, see what your wife has done. No? Before you say, we do something to your wife. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. He's saying, until we learn to deny these most intricate relationships of our lives, we are not ready. I said he wants the house to be full, but not at all cost. 
He wants all men to be saved on his own terms. You lower the standard to their peril and the peril of that ministry that you say you are running. He doesn't know them. The way sons are made is by sons being discipled by the son. Discipleship is what we are called unto, not what we call ministry. It's just like a child that is learning, what do they call it now? This uh, he addressing. A small girl that is learning how to do hair dressing. He's one that will wash clothes for madam. Am I correct? Cook for madam. Do run errands for madam. And he's so good at that that he doesn't even know how to weave hair. <laughs> and then in it, this is our position. He put our lily. We are very good pastors, very good teachers. We can wave out and the whole or you will fall down under the anointing. But there's no character to back it up. The power of ministry is not charisma, it's character. The power of ministry is not charisma, it's character. Can I show you? This youth pastor is the best in town. When he handles the youth, in two weeks you see the difference. However, you can't trust him with guests. Where is the old anointing now? I would rather keep my child with somebody who has character. That anointing is not for my daughter. The power of your ministry is not charisma, it's character. Who you are. I don't have time to talk about that. I preach a message somewhere outside Nigeria. Identity. I think I did something like that in Nigeria sometime. Identity. The word identity on the word identitas. And it means the same over and over and over again. Your identity is not what you do when you are here, when they are looking at you as a minister. It's who you are when nobody's looking. Do you masturbate? I know you are a pastor. Do you watch pornography online, pretending that you are studying the Bible? Do you make passes as sisters in the church in the name of greeting, Olikis? Oli, oli Those are your characters. Those are the things to deal with. Those are the things disciples don't joke with. They can decide not to do what you call ministry to deal with these issues. Because they know they are weightier than what you are calling ministry. It's just like that child who is learning how to make dress. Yeah, I mean, here. And all she's good at is washing plates and washing clothes. The first thing that brought her here is to learn how to do what? Weave her. She has left the weightier matters of the Lord and become a specialist in Amon when Elena is there. Let's begin to check ourselves. Thank God I'm not in your heart. But let the Holy Spirit stir it up to serious introspection. And on to amendment so that we can be on track again. Many of us have wasted 30 years, and I'm sorry to say, wasted because of these things I'm saying. But the God of restoration that sent me to you not 30 years ago, but today, He will restore back to you. In the name of Jesus. He doesn't make mistakes, He's never too late, He's always on time. You wish, I wish Pastor Daly was around 30 years ago, I was still drinking. I was still carrying women, green, blue, black, purple, short, tall. So he couldn't have sent me in that time. He's now he's sending me. Take advantage. Hallelujah. 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 Are we following? I say, are we following? Yes. Continue that scripture, please. I'm going far, very far. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, hey! I, not? I always ask people. What does cross symbolize? They tell me is death. And I always correct them. It's not death. Cross symbolizes the most brutal death. Anybody can die. It's not mere death. Death means death. It's not death. Cross symbolizes the most brutal death. Any man can die. 
o ni agbelebu duro fun jesus is o liar liar o to ba ko ma tele mi o godo gbe agbelebu re it's voluntary he didn't say they will put it on you you take it i remember doing a message in 96 i call it the living christian martyrs and the christian and the kingdom of god they do hear it who are the martyrs but they, these ones are living living christian martyrs and the kingdom of god they are the only ones that we enter the kingdom they are dead this is death god is asking for many of us are still praying the prayer hey that we decrease that you will increase until you pay john the baptist you don't pray he's calling for death now not decrease go pay john did he pay him he decreased the little that remained finished him he became least in the kingdom change your prayers you need to die Zipporah knew what he was saying. You are a bloody husband to me. Your God is a bloody God. Blood, blood. Oh, like a bloody Jew. What's the problem? The wife of Moses. After she circumcised the son. You bloody husband to me. What is special about blood? Leviticus 17, 11. The life of an animal. It's in the blood thereof. God needs your life, not your service. You can't bribe God with your service. He needs your life. You must donate it. That's what we are running away from. We use ministry to cover it. Pastoring is not your calling. Your calling is to die. Don't use ministry to cover it. That's not your calling. Your vocation is one. The vocation of every child of God is one. It's not the several ministries. Divide and say. The only call is to be a son of God. The only way you can be a son is to be a disciple. You can't be a disciple without carrying your cross and dying daily. I will show you we are still here. Let's stop pretending to ourselves. You can't deceive God. He's showing why those people did not make it. The man that was born without the excuses and those that gave excuses they loved what they had more than the calling i didn't say more than their ministries more than the calling what did they have wife that was what Jesus was addressing down what did they have land what did they have new tractor to work on the farm or what did they want they love those things at the expense of Jesus. And he said, I have not come for peace. I have come for war. You are not following. I will come. My job is to snatch you from your lovers. Your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your husband, your everybody. You love me at their expense. If I call and they call, you answer me first. And if I say don't answer them, you don't answer them. Oh, yeah. You're not serious. That is the only kind of fidelity that can make us to answer the call. All this is thank you for calling here. God knows we are deceiving ourselves. Some of us because of ignorance. Why were they were giving the excuses? They didn't answer the call. But they were doing the ministry. The ministry was the ox. The ministry was the new wife. The ministry was the land. But they had no time for the calling, which is only one. What are we called unto? Go ahead. I'm going very fast. And Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You carry your cross voluntarily. Alright? In that message I talked about, the living Christian Matthias and the kingdom of God, I explained that it is a suicidal mission, it's not a murderous mission. You kill you, I kill me. God will not help you to kill you. All God will do is to provide instruments, malice, blackmail, lies, you know, rumor against you, falsehood against you, 
Your wife will hit you. Your brother will bash you. Those are the instruments of death. If you don't know how to take advantage of them, the only prayer you know to raise is prayer of, oh, this trouble is too much. Oh, God, it will deliver you, but your trouble remains. Nigerian church, wake up. What you want is not the will of God. Anything we don't like is from the devil. We bind and cast out until we cast out the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I will touch on sore points here today. The Lord give you a large heart to receive those things. Amen. Uh, uh, only some, Amen. Oh my God. Oh, you thought I would tell you 10 steps to become a millionaire here? Go to business school. 28. For which of you uh -huh. intended Now, he now showed us from that 20 to 30 how that we need to count the cost before we come to Christ. Can't, this is the cost you have to count now. Some people, they are in trouble because their jobs are not doing well. And they see that this ministry is... Uh -uh. Don't work here, but both of you share line journey or to the logo. Let me tell you something. I tell people, preaching is the least job in the world. Preaching is not ministry. Somebody God call me to preach. What? Don't let me talk. <laughs> God call you to preach. What kind of message is that? God call you to preach. Preaching is not a ministry. Preaching is an avenue for ministry. It's a channel for ministry. You better go and hear properly. God does not call anybody to preach. We have all been called to preach. You don't need any special call for that. Sorry, oh. Oh, well, <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> now, what am I saying? <laughs> for which of you? So, he told them, can the cost properly? Don't come halfway and say you want to change your mind. Let me give you a scripture. We don't have time to read it. Luke chapter 9, 57 to 62. You see three instances of people. Two came to Jesus. Jesus called one. One came. Master, I will follow you. However, I want to ask for small permission. Please, let me quickly. There's no way. It's either here or there. It is neither here nor there. That one is not acceptable. It must be either here or there. Another one said, you, follow me. He said, ah, that's nice. I've been trying to follow you all this way. However, I want to go and say bye-bye. He said, ah, here. He was testing this fidelity. Total commitment to him, not to ministry. He is the object of our worship and our sacrifices, not ministry. Ministry is by the way. When you become a true disciple, you don't care what name they call your ministry. You leave and ministry shows up. Oh, yes. I've told you about funny or new ministry. You may not know the name, they may not know the name, but the one way, ah, oh, well, Bella That is the right order to enter ministry. That is the right order. Hallelujah. So he was checking whether it would be number one in their life or number second. Somebody once said, if you put him first in your life, he'll put you first. If you put him second, he'll put you last. Did you hear me? If you put Jesus first in your life, he will put you first. If you put him seven, second, he will put you last. Because that's the worst you can do to him. To him, second is worse than last. That's an insult on his majesty. I preach to you, I preach to me. Is he really number one in everything I do? Oh, I wish. Let's challenge ourselves and stop hypocrisy. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, in that Luke 9, 57 to 62, you see Jesus at every point. More or less discouraging them from coming. No, he wants all men to be saved. But... The standards are uncompromisable, rigidly uncompromisable, rigidly uncompromisable. You lower the standards so that they can let them confess. Come where? They come to church, not to Christ. There are brothers in church and there are brothers in Christ. Single ladies, are you hearing me? Are you like you? 
Praise God. You know Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, if there be any among you that is called brother, verse 9, 1 Corinthians 5, 5 9, if there is called brother because own what church, own bagger, own lulu, own corn, own wasu, then you can't be a brother and a fornicator at the same time. You can stumble into fornication. You cannot be a fornicator. Impossible. Impossicant. Mommy, eh, boy, boy, are you? Impossicant. Mommy, walk away. Ah, I'm going to Impossicant is strong. You're impossible, law. Impossible is impossible plus cannot. That is impossicant. No chance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, it's verse 11. Thank you. Not verse 9. First Corinthians, they just corrected me now. First Corinthians 5, 11, not 9. So, it's important for us to understand what is important to God. Or else, I can say to one you, you can have all the zeal. Go to Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Paul t- testified about the zeal of the Israelites. He said, but their zeal were without what? Knowledge. Go back to Ephesians 1, 18. That the eyes of your understanding be... Zeal is good. But if your heart is darkened, it will turn to a snare. Hallelujah. What we are doing now is the enlightening of our understanding. So that we can know what is the hope of our calling. Even when we didn't even know the calling. You see people go to Mr. Conference. How many of you are pastoring 50 years? Yeah, raise your hand. I want to pastor 5,000 by next year. Hey! <laughs> Bishop, lay hand on me. I want to pastor 5,000. Oh, no, do. You want to pastor 5,000. I met at home. You put no comment in I see that is the mark of your faithfulness before God. Ah, ignorance is on rampage. Ah. That's why some of us don't talk. Because like, ah, kilo wa correct in Bogota wan shebai, but when you correct it, you want to can't correct it. So you just look at it. Because you two know you don't know all things. Beta Bamu, yeah, Kafir and Awalo. Am I correct? Praise God. Praise God. So back to Luke 14. Start from 31 now. I'm going to 33. That's the key. 31. I've said what is in 28 to 31 to 30. Go to 32. Okay. Or what king Mm. going to make He's still talking about counting the cost. Now 33, which is my target. Listen to verse 33 now. Why all those that were invited did not make it? Listen, yes. So likewise, uh-huh. whosoever he be of you uh-huh. that forsaketh not all that he had. What kept them away? What they had. He cannot be my disciple. Thank you. I just got me a wife. I got me a land. I got me an ox or a series of oxes, oxen. What they had. Sister, I, I'm a in church. I'm a you know me. That we prayed before God gave us. <laughs> ah, bro, it's a long time. <laughs> you know, this is my job. <laughs> uh, okay, and you will lose it. Oh, yes. So that you can have time for the king. Then you'll be sleeping in church. you become very zealous. <laughs> you come to the right hand of Pastor. Pastor, are you not going anywhere? I want to follow you anywhere. <laughs> See that brother is very f- zealous. No lie. <laughs> Praise God. We can laugh over these are realities. Ah, uh, you agree? <laughs> these are realities. So don't wait till you lose your job. Lift God above it. I will lift your name, I am. I will lift your name higher. I will lift your name higher. Above all the names. I will lift your name higher. I will lift your name higher. 
I will lift your name above all the names. We have to lift him above all else. That is his demand on us. It's not an appeal. That is our calling. It's not preaching. It's not pastor near any church. When you live like this, your ministry emerges plainly. They may not even have a name for it. When he called me, he told me, I'm not calling you to what they call ministry. I've given you a move. But call it ministry because they cannot understand. Say it's a move, not a ministry. I don't care what you call it. I just serve God. Praise God. Hallelujah. What kept them from heeding the call was what? What they had. But I dare say also, what they did not have helped the matter. They did not have their eyes of their understanding enlightened. Let me show you what they did not have. Just write these scriptures down. Trust me, when you check them, you'll find them accurately. Isaiah 51 verse 1. Isaiah 51 verse 1. Revelation 21, 6 to 8. Revelation 21, 6 to 8. Revelation 22, 7. Revelation 21, verse 6 to verse 8. Revelation 22, verse 7. John 7, 37 to 39. John 7, 37 to 39. All those scriptures talk about how the water of life is free. You don't need to pay. From Old to New Testament. On the great last day of the great feast, he lifted up his voice and said, Whosoever is thirsty, let him come and drink freely. Out of your village shall flow out rivers of living water. How? Come and drink without money. Revelation 21. He said, Come and drink freely. Those of you that have no money. Revelation 22. He said, The spirit and bride say, Come. And let it that he has say, Come. To every man that is thirsty, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. All they were running after were the things he has provided. Just like Peter that was saying, I was, I'm going out fishing. He couldn't cut, cut jack. And when he came back, fish was already on fire. Kilon lewaka. Kilon lewaka. He's able. He who has called us is what? Masikaya bashataya. Montelega. Viga dosa shataya. He's able. We have our own race. It's more than enough. I did a message. I call it the cross and the stuff. <laughs> the cross and the stuffs. Cross is going to go to the cross. It's going to go to the cross. It's going to go You are not joining something else to the cross. Impossible can't to complete the journey. The cross and the stuff. Cross alone, you need help. You are not carrying other things. I told them, I, I went somewhere. I just spent big money on the AC of my car. Two days after, crash. I managed again. I don't like the AC. Do it again. Crash. I was here in another car in Lagos. I was somewhere else. Sell it off. I cannot serve Gucci Goss. Sell it off! Cannot serve two gods. This only one I'm serving you. This in Bomoti I will not be serving cars. You wake up in the morning and be thinking, ha, ah, close my room for the bye. Oh God. What you What you have has become a snare. Say off. Learn number more deba your emoji cockata. Benny. Modi Gokada. Molo Jamala. I'm not going to be long one today. I'm going to be Okada. Yeah, I'm going to I enter Molue. Only, Uncle, only, Uncle. Only, can you follow me? Only. Ah, Pastor. Chelsea. Can you want some <laughs> we 
we can laugh. I want to get a loan to Lomo. You know, I think we're going to be Complete fidelity, brethren. That's our call. He's not been a good preacher. He's not been a good preacher. So my name is Mon Pichi. I'm just talking. I'm not talking. Mon Pichi, sorry, you're feeding. You're not going to be able to do it. Mon Pichi, I'm not going I'm just talking. If you call it preaching, that's you. that's you. I'm just talking. I don't want to be a good preacher. But I want God to use me to bless people. That's all. Who am I competing with? What they had kept them away. Now, our call. Call to what? There are several things that the Bible mentioned in the Bible that we are called unto. Say so we are called unto obtaining an inheritance. Let me just start from there, but that's not where I'm going. Say, it's ready, oh. My mom, you're calling for me to love Praise God. <laughs> you see? Hebrews 11 verse 8. Check for me. Hebrews 11 verse 8. The Bible said God gave a promise to Abraham of an inheritance. How did he get it? By faith, Abraham, uh -huh. when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. He was going to receive for an inheritance. And the Bible says we are also called to obtain an, a blessing as an inheritance. Now, how did he get it? That's the only way you can get it too. How? Obeyed. Thank you. That's where I'm going. He did what? Not knowing whither he went. Whither he, went. he just did what? He went out Faith is obedience. He obeyed. No question. That's the sign of the disciple. <laughs> the man of God sitting down here, I preach a message. 1993. I'm sure you can't remember. I was coming back with. He said, that love with God, when God has spoken, is monologue. You remember Balaam? You are just on your own. That love with God, when he has given his final verdict, is monologue. You are talking to yourself. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, don't say what's he? Hey, you say we are going to buy it? I When God has given His word, certified word on any matter, every dialogue you call it is monologue. You are talking to yourself. Praise God. Complete fidelity. That's our calling. So, how did He get His own inheritance? He got it by what? By obedience. How do people obey? What brings obedience? Uh huh. Hebrews 5 8. Okay. Though, that though, a son, though Jesus was a son, yet learned he obedience. Through what? By the things which he suffered. Me, I know go suffer. <laughs> Even Jesus, born without the nature of sin. Could not obey without suffering. Go and take all your Greek and German and Aramaic and everything. Suffering is suffering. Suffering is suffering. And he defined it in First Peter chapter 4 from 12. Say when you suffer, don't suffer as a sinner. In verse 16, if, he said, if you suffer for, for as persecution, he said, the spirit of, of God and of grace do it rest upon you. He didn't say pray to become. He said, it is resting already. And that's our call. I'm showing you the connection between suffering, inheriting a promise, suffering, obedience, inheriting a promise, leading us to the hope of our calling. I will show you the hope of our calling now. Jesus did not come to die for us to make us pastors. One thing. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. There is therefore now 
no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the lack likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He didn't come to work miracles. He didn't come to make us millionaires. He didn't come to raise the dead. It's just like a child that went to school and had and heads in school, played football. That was not why he went. Those things were just by the side. Jesus came for one thing, sin. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man can come to God except by me. There is no alternative. 